are these people? One more piece, and that is by INN friend of the family, Dissident, who I spoke with a couple of weeks ago. If you missed our INN one-on-one podcast, it was the first time he's ever done a podcast. First time we've ever heard his voice on any podcast live, and it was a good time. Um, he's a good dude. We've been fr- you know, friends on Discord and in Twitter for four years, and he wrote a lot of stuff for INN. He wrote this one this week, and I wanted to talk about what bullshit this whole Russiagate thing is and what's going on there. So we know something about this a little bit. We have friends that work for the Russian network, but this is crazy what's happening. And I don't really want to necessarily talk about the people that were caught up in this, but I'll read what, what dissident has to say. Russiate is a psyop that will never die. Just when you think it's gone forever, it comes back. It's like a bad, bad penny. The most recent iteration mm-hmm. of Russiagate comes in the form of a Southern District of New York indictment that alleges that the conservative outlet Tenet Media received $10 million from two empl- for, for two employees of the Russian state-funded news outlet RT and that this money was given to prominent conservative commentators uh, such as Dave Rubin, Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, Lauren Southern, without them knowing it, came from Russia. Mm -hmm. While it's very possible that this story is true, it's worth noting that the stories of Russian election interference in the last two elections have been debunked. It's it's also worth noting that even if the story is 100% true, it's a joke and pales in comparison to election interference the U.S. does around the world. So first, the Russiagate stories from 2016 and 2020, of course, have been proven false. It's worth noting that the stories of election interference for the last two have been disproven. In 2016, the FBI and other intelligence agencies accused Russia of hacking the DNC and giving the emails to Julian Assange. The Mueller report alleged that WikiLeaks received the DNC emails from a Russian cutout called Guccifer 2.0, on June 14, 2016. The problem with this narrative is that Assange had already announced that he had the DNC emails on June 12, two days prior, and WikiLeaks did not publish any material from Guccifer 2.0, as the account had already put out most of it publicly, and WikiLeaks was unable to verify the content. Slight bit of an error there. A 2017. No, they know what's, it's a Julian's bar and gym, man. Julian. It could be Pink Julian guy. that fucked up the. Uh, the what? The Icky Leaks or the who? The Pity Keys or whatever the fuck the. Never mind. What the Pity Keys? Right. Who was a Julian, wasn't he? The, the fucked up the what? The lick, Licky Leaks or. The, the Lick. What, what is the Licky Leaks? The Licky Leaks. The Licky Leaks. The Julian Assanges. Boom. <laughs> yes, he fucking dummy. Yep. Yeah. The Licky Leaks, yes, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's that's Trailer okay. Park Boys for those who don't know. But the 2017, so good. A, a 2017 forensic investigation from the Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity, a collection of former intel officials such as NSA whistleblowers Bill Binney and former CIA analyst Ray McGovern, found that the DNC emails on WikiLeaks would have had to have been a leak and not a hack. Finally, in in 2019, the narrative was fully debunked when a 2017 testimony was released showing that CrowdStrike, the Clinton campaign hired firm responsible for generating the claim that Russia hacked the DNC, had no evidence to back it up. The company's CEO, Sean Henry, admitted they had, quote, no concrete evidence that Russia stole the emails from the DNC. This is just rehashing things. All right. Unbelievable. No evidence they were actually exfiltrated. Unbelievable. Right. That was Sean Henry under congressional testimony. There were also allegations in 2016 of Russian bots swinging the election, but these allegations only amounted to a single troll form where only 11% of the content was even related to the election. That, I believe, is the Internet Research Agency, the IRA. 
Even the Pentagon-funded Rand Corporation admitted that the troll farm's messaging was either was neither well organized nor especially resor well resourced. I believe it was fifty thousand dollars spent on Facebook ads. Mm. Many other claims of Russian bots in 2016 were completely proven false. The bots were actually correct the record, and David Brooks and Peter Dow. Oh yeah, that guy. He worked for David Brooks. I, I seem to recall. The neocon think tank, Hamilton 68, your favorite, claimed to have uncovered a list of 69. 600 Russian bots on Twitter. But even the Twitter files proved that most of the accounts were not originating from Russia at all, and that even Twitter suspected that most of that list was bogus too. Russian scum! In 2020, the intelligence community claimed that Russia was putting bounties on the heads of American troops in Afghanistan. The CIA later came out and admitted they had no evidence for this claim either. Former intel agents also claimed the content of Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian information, leading it to be blocked on social media platforms. You know, Hunter Biden's junk and that big nothing burger. This was disproven years later when... Mainstream media outlets ranging from the Washington Post to the New York Times verified the content as authentic. Hunter Biden has admitted he could have dropped his laptop off at a repair shop and later even sued the repair shop where he dropped it off for wrongfully sharing his personal data. But sure, it was just dick pics and it was completely manufactured and Rudy Giuliani and blah, 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 blah. The shit lib talking points about this, the, the mental gymnastics are just insane. Glenn Greenwald literally left his job and a cushy, a cushy one at that with paid security over this. While so far, no evidence has come out countering the allegations from the recent indictment and Lauren Chen and Leon Donovan, the founders of Tenet Media, had yet to put out a statement countering the allegations the fact that previous claims of Russian interference have been proven to be bogus is reason alone not to accept these allegations at face value. Yep. Now he says, even if this story is true... But Indy... Go ahead. If, if you can't trust the CIA, hmm? you if, know... Hey, if you can't trust who, the CIA can, and our institutions, then, then, then who can you trust? That's right. That's right. I love that. Even if this story is entirely true, it is an absolute joke of an attempt at election interference. Even the indictment admits none of the commentators even knew they were on a Russian payroll, stating Tenet Media was falsely portraying to commentator one and commentator two that U.S. company one was sponsored by a private investor named Edward Gregorian. Okay. okay. Like the Gregorian chants. Yes. Yes. There is no evidence that the Russian funding even influenced any of the content on the channels they were paying. I debate that. Tim Pool in his statement said he licensed his podcast, Culture Wars, to Tenet Media, but that he had full editorial control over the show and that the only condition of the agreement was to broadcast the show on Tenet's YouTube channel. Rave Dubin said that he knew nothing about the activity and the only content he produced for Tenet was a show called People of the Internet that covered viral videos. Examples of Rubin's content okay. from Tenet Media found on, on the Wayback Machine, which hopefully won't be going away, but due to a lawsuit might be, include a video titled Chimps Have a Bizarre Reaction to Prosthetic Legs and a reaction to the comic the viral comedic video, what if Google was a guy? <laughs> they paid him yep. inordinate sums for a 1,400 view video, for example. Yep. Or this one to have 1,600 views on their channel. Show me the money! The indictment does not even allege that the RT funding influenced any of the creators and in fact only cited 
Two examples of the RT employees even trying to influence the content at all. One example they cited was the RT employee trying to get the company to repost a video of Tucker Carlson in a grocery store in Russia, a video that had already been widely seen on social media and already shared by multiple news outlets. Right. Okay. Another example cited in the indictment is that the RT employees asked Tenet Media to blame the Moscow terror attack on Ukraine a fairly con silly conspiracy theory given the fact that ISIS had already taken credit for that attack. That would be ISIS-K connected to the CIA. Yeah, I mean, except CIA. They, they found Ukrainian, like, Well, a telegram, a, a telegram channel that was communicating that could have been who knows who. Yes. Well, they, like, traced crypto money to it. I... I didn't know if it necessarily if I remember traced correctly. the Ukraine. I thought it was to an anonymous Telegram account, but they didn't know who it was that they were getting it from. I I think they figured that out. Maybe I don't. I I don't. I know. don't know. But he says, furthermore, all the creators on Tenant Media already had massive audiences on YouTube and other social media platforms, and would have had eyeballs on their content with or without this funding. Even if the story is 100% true, it seems more like a giant waste of money and resources on the part of the Russians than some sort of psychological warfare operation, as the Justice Department has alleged. The Russians allegedly paid $10 million to content creators who in turn created a bunch of silly clickbait videos without even knowing they were receiving Russian funding. It doesn't seem all at all that the Russians were able to steer the content of these creators in their preferred direction, and the only influence they were able to put forward amounted to a silly conspiracy over the Moscow terror attacks and a Tucker Carlson video that had already been widely viewed. Even a former CIA analyst, Michael Van, Van Landingham, who had played a big part in the original Russiagate, claims in 2016, right, said that painting the creation of YouTube videos as psychological warfare on millions of Americans overstates the gravity of the threat. Agreed. This joke, or this interference, this joke interference, pales in comparison to real election interference done by America around the world. The greatest irony of this story is that this joke of an attempt at election interference, again, pales in comparison to what's done by America worldwide. Some notable examples, and he just listed a few here. The 96, in 96, the U.S. helped sway the Russian election toward their preferred neoliberal candidate. We know Boris Yeltsin. There's a very famous movie called Spinning Boris about that. In 2002, the U.S. backed a coup against Hugo Chavez, the democratically elected president of Venezuela. In 2006, the U.S. attempted to over overthrow Hamas after they were elected in Gaza by arming members of Fatah in Egypt for a coup attempt. In 2014, the U.S. funded think tanks and organizations, of course, that set the, the stage for violent coup against Yanukovych in Ukraine and the Maidan coup. And here we go again. The U.S. in 2015 bragged about using social media influence operations to swing Venezuela's National Assembly to the opposition. And then they, uh, they of course, they tried to put a coup against uh, Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua in 2018. Right In 2019, U.S. used the OAS to falsely claim Evo Morales stole his election, leading to a violent far-right military coup. Do we see a pattern yeah. here of election interference happening, but it's not from the Russians? Right, Even Pakistan, and that this is partly because of his support for Russia and the fact that he wouldn't honor the U.S. sanctions, the U.S. forced the removal of Pakistan's democratically elected prime minister Imran Khan because he was against the proxy war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. These are all well-organized attempts at election interference that often resulted in actual coups against democratically elected governments because democracy, right? 
just like the Democratic Party is so yep. about democracy. Compare this to Russia's election interference, which amounted to funding a bunch of mainstream conservatives without even being able to influence their content as they weren't even aware they were being funded by Russia. So, in summation, he honestly doesn't know if these allegations are true or not. Um, I watched T-Lab's assessment, and when people offer you a whole lot of money to make the content you're already making, you should do a little bit more yeah. deep dive on where that money is coming from, and you should be a little bit more skeptical when it's far above market rate. I don't care what Tim Pool has to say about that. The fact that previous Russiagate claims, again, were proven false causes me to be skeptical. But the fact that founders of Tenet Media have yet to comment on the allegations points to the fact that they could very well be true. Even so, taking all the allegations at face value, the Russians' attempts at election interference, if this that's what even what this is, are a complete joke. The indictment reads more like a Russian version of Burn After Reading, that's a good movie with Brad Pitt and uh, John Malkovich, than some sort of well-organized intelligence John operation. Malkovich, John Malkovich? Not John Malkovich. Yep. John Malkovich? The RT yeah. funding did not seem to have any impact on the actual content made for Tenet Media from creators like Dave Rubin and Tim Pool who were unaware they were even being funded by RT in the first place. All in all, the $10 million seems to have been a giant waste of money from the Russians who were unable to even get much of their propaganda messaging out through their operation. You saw the view counts on those. They were nothing. If they put them on their own channels, they'd have gotten more. Yep. Nevertheless, these allegations will be used to crack down further on independent media McCarthy smear anyone critical of the official State Department narrative and continue the new Cold War with Russia and the proxy war in Ukraine. And that was really the goal of the whole thing. And the because one angle... Putin's a madman. Putin is a madman. All right. And there's a couple of comments there. Again, good piece by The Dissident. The Dissident is the 307.substack.com. I also weighed in here with a tweet. All right. And what I said is this was immediately my immediate take. This was the Washington Post headline. Justice Department in alleged scheme charges to Russian media. Thing. And I they paywalled this article and somehow I got access to it. So I cropped it and put it out. So nobody has to pay to read it if they want to. All right. But this says the same shit. And what I said was WAPO is hot steaming garbage as is the Justice Department. This is insane. $10 million? Crypto has already spent $119 million plus. APAC has already spent $100 million plus. But sure, the $10 million here allegedly did what exactly? Some unknown Money damage? No, it's not that. Some unknown damage to someone unknown. <laughs> what is, again, what did it influence? How do you measure what it even did? All right. President Trump incited an erection. That's that's right, Cam Cam. He sure did. Um, $248 million already spent on this cycle in total, but we're worried about $10 million because reasons. All right. And again, that's the paywalled post just to show what this was from and that it wasn't just a headline when it's dated. And then here's another link from Common Dreams, Indie Media Award honoree, showing dark money outside. Thank you. Dark money outside spending exceeding $1 billion already this cycle. So again, again, let me hear your fucking crocodile tears about how much this $10 million they're so worried about is going to influence the election. Only dumbasses believe this nonsense. I mean, it. What? Wow! Wow! Um, and finally, bam. finally, bam! Um, congratulations to our friend the dissident for reaching a thousand subscribers on his Substack, the three hundred seven dot Substack dot com. It took some time. He wrote a nice article about it. Go check it out. And he does also. 
give kind of a recap of what he's written recently because he took a bunch down. Um, he he does give us a, a shout out and he says uh, he didn't know if he'd ever be able to hit a thousand, let alone this quickly. And he said he's able to get there thanks to everyone that subscribed and special thanks to me and INN who's done more than anyone to help the dissident grow since the beginning. And again, there's a link in there to our podcast. Um, so check that out. If you enjoy the work, please consider becoming a paid subscriber, support independent media, like I say all the time. All right. That's my brother, the dissident. I'm really happy for him. Ben Media, he's good. He's good peeps too. Check him out. Uh, all right. So that's uh, that's about what I, hey, how about that? That wrapped up pretty nicely. But support independent media, like I said, support INN, support the Zago Brothers independent art as well. They are independent. We're independent. It just kind of works, you know, independence helping each other. And and this is nobody else is going to do this for us. They got billions. We got us. And we got yep. you. So thank <clears throat> you. Really. I love you all.